Hi everyone, this is Arun Reddy here. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Arun Reddy Tech for you. In this video, we are going to see a topic called concurrency control. So let us see what is this concurrency control. And if you are new to my video and if you want to learn DBMS, you can go through my channel playlist. There is a playlist called DBMS. In this playlist, you will find the remaining videos. Okay. And if you want to learn in Telugu, there is a uh, playlist name called DBMS in Telugu where remaining videos are available. And if you don't want to miss my video, please subscribe my channel and don't forget to like and share my videos. Okay, coming to our topic, concurrency control. Okay, so first, what is concurrency means? Executing simultaneously is called as concurrency. Okay, and what do you mean by concurrency control means? When you are executing the multiple transactions simultaneously, then you need to control the transactions. So controlling of uh, multiple transactions at a time is called as or simultaneously is called as concurrency control. Okay. See, you can see here in a multiple program environment where multiple transactions are executed simultaneously, it is highly important to control the concurrency of transaction. Right. So of course, it is very important to control the concurrency of transaction. Otherwise, um, uh, there will be a no consistent data. Right. So we have concurrency control protocol ah, to control the concurrency or concurrency control. We have a protocols what they are called concurrency control protocols. So what they will do, they will ensure that the data is automaticity, isolation, serializable and concurrent transaction. Okay, of concurrent transaction, right? Okay, so let us see before going to the concurrency control protocol. Let us see what problems we will have when you execute concurrently. Okay, so let us see problems with concurrent execution. Of course, we know we have two operations read operation and write operation, right? So these two operations we, we are going to perform. Okay, when they are performed at a time. Okay, so there is need to manage these two operation concurrent uh, uh, concurrent execution of the transaction as if the operations are not performed in interleaved manner okay that means if they are mixed then we will have a problem right and the data may be become inconsistent so when suppose the multiple operations are uh, interleaved means they are uh, interrupting each other then what happens they will be a inconsistent right okay so now what are the problems are uh, what what are the problems we will face when you uh, have a concurrent execution means there are mainly three okay lost update problem that is called write write conflict dirty read problem that is called read uh, write read conflict and unpredictable read problem that is write uh, read conflict so let us see what is this write 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 read and write read conflict first one lost update okay so this conflict after when two transactions perform write operations on the same data item in database in such way that the data ends up in a inconsistent way for example see i have checked my balance a account read a thousand okay so somebody has sent 500 rupees to me so that means i uh, a is equal to a plus 500 that means 1500 but we didn't complete our writing right so in between t2 transaction has read the balance again of course, now till now we didn't write, so it will not get update, right? So what uh, T2 transaction has read that A's account is thousand rupees, right? Now after reading, what happens? See, then uh, it is writing the A. Now it is updating the database, right? After updating, what uh, again somebody has sent a five hundred rupees to me, and now write what I have done? It is writing that thousand uh, plus five hundred. That means fifteen hundred. Now what happened? We lost 500. See, when you are updating your transaction, we lost 500 because it has read 1000. Before updating, it has read as 1000 and it has updated as 500. So totally it has written 1500 to the database. Now where this 500 went? So these kind of conflicts are called write write conflict. Right. Next one is dirty read. Ah. Before a transaction is completed, this conflict occurs when a transaction makes changes to the data items and the database and the transaction fail to make the changes. For example, if something is before before committing of a transaction or before rollbacking of a transaction or aborting the transaction, we have read. So this is called dirty read. Okay, see, I have a thousand rupees. Now somebody has transferred 500 to my account. Now it has written 1500, but we didn't commit or rollback. Okay, due to some network issue or something issue, uh, it has it did it didn't uh, committed. Okay, so before that we read that it is 1500. Now after that it, the transaction has aborted. That means cancelled. That means 500 will be rolled back, right? 
Now again the balance will be thousand. But here what happens? It has rate as fifteen hundred and it has committed. Or suppose uh, somebody has transferred money and it has updated as fifteen hundred. Now what happens? It has committed. This is called dirty read. That means if a transaction committed before a transaction is committed or aborted, we are reading it. This kind of re uh, uh, right read con is called as right read conflict or dirty read. Before a transaction is committed, we are trying to read it. Then it is called as dirty read. So these kind of problems also will face with the. Uh, Uh, I'm sorry. This kind of problems also we'll face when you are having a concurrency execution. Another one is unrepeatable, uh, unrepeatable read problem. Now, unrepeatable read read problem. See, what happens? I have uh, when it is reading, it is thousand. See, the conflict occurs when a transaction read the different values at the same da data item. This is also known as inconsistent retrieval or unrepeatable or non-repeatable read problem. What happens? It has read thousand. Again, some T two transaction rate thousand, and uh, somebody they have means uh, they have sent money to or withdrawn money five hundred rupees. Now it has written as five hundred. So now T one is again reading. It is getting a five hundred. See, when it T T one transaction is reading, it is getting a different values. This should not happen. When you are reading a tran a transaction is reading a value, it is getting a two different values. This kind of problems is called unrepeatable read problem or non-repeatable read problems, right? Okay. So now till now we have seen what are the problems. Now let us see what are the concurrency protocols we use to maintain consistent data. Okay. See to avoid control con uh, concurrency control problems and to maintain consistent and serializable during the execution of a concurrent transaction, some rules are made. Of course, protocols means rules, right? So these rules are known as concurrency control protocol. Okay. So what are they? Log based protocol, time stamp based protocol, valid based protocol. Valid based protocol is also called as optimized con uh, concurrency control. Okay. So let us see one by one. So first, log based protocol. Ah, uh, what is log based protocol? To attain consi uh, consistency, isolation between the transaction is the most important tool. Is isolation. Okay, so how isolation will be achieved when you lock a transaction? Okay, when you lock a transaction, you are not allowing other people, right? So that's how we can isolate. Okay, so isolating is achieved if we disable the transaction perform on read and write operation. Means other transaction cannot read and write when one perform one transaction is performing. Okay, so this is known as locking. Ah, uh, so isolating is indirectly called as locking, right? So in these locks, we have two kinds. See, we are not saying locking protocols. We are saying locks. So what are they to shade lock exclusive lock? Shade lock means more than one operation can be performed. For example, if uh, for example A account T one is reading A A account T two can also read the A account T one is reading A T A account T two can also read because read read see so nobody is updating so no issue okay nothing happens if more than one transaction is reading right so shade lock will apply only on reading. right see the lock which disable the write operation write operation will not work in the shade lock but allows read operation for any data transaction is known as shade lock okay so they are they are also known as read only lock and how they are represented s see for read remember for read we use r write we use w right so here shade lock we use s exclusive lock x ha ah. so what is exclusive lock it allows both read and write Exclusive lock will allow both read and write, but it can perform on only any data item transaction is known as exclusive. Exclusive means only for that, uh, only for that transaction. Okay, right. So in this lock, multiple transaction do not modify the same data simultaneously. See, now multiple transaction cannot operate, cannot lock uh, exclusive lock, but multiple transaction can lock shared lock. But shared lock will not allow write, but exclusive lock. Will not allow multiple. Okay, now let me explain how this will work. Okay, so see, R is for read, W is for write, shared lock S, exclusive lock X, unlock, ah, uh, unlock U. Okay, now see, T one is performing uh, reading operation. Before that, it has asked for shared lock. It has allowed. Now T two transaction is also asking shared lock. See, it is not. It doesn't unlock. Okay, T one is not unlocked, but still, T uh, two also got the lock. That means shared lock is only reading transaction. Okay, it is only allowed read transaction and in, uh, multiple transactions can 
can be given the shade same log right then what is exclusive log c exclusive log suppose i if i give exclusive log for t1 see if somebody has asked in between shade log or exclusive log i am not going to give exclusive log until it complete the transaction it unlock it will not allow other transaction to lock see even if it is shade lock also it is not accepting until unlock right for example you have exclusive lock and um, you are asking you are you want to write yes yes you can perform read and write you cannot perform read and write in the shade lock right uh, see after unlock only you can perform the shade lock exclusive lock and exclusive lock also see exclusive lock somebody is asking for exclusive lock no you cannot perform until it exclusive lock is unlock so what you are saying shade lock is only read lock okay and it can give multi uh, it can give for multiple transactions okay exclusive lock only on one transaction it will do but it will accept both read and write okay so i will show you ex example so this side are granted one okay so already suppose some uh, shade lock i have granted on a now somebody is ask uh, other transaction is requesting for shade lock yes i will give right but somebody is asking suppose if i perform shade lock and somebody is asking for exclusive lock no exclusive lock also contain write lock right so i cannot allow right suppose i have granted a, i got a granting a grant uh, on a a exclusive lock i got on a a now somebody is asking for shade lock will i give no somebody asking for exclusive lock no only shade lock it will you allow other shade lock only when you grant uh, you got a shade lock and your somebody is requesting for shade lock you will allow otherwise remaining are no right so remember this table right now let us see what are the locking based protocols ah so locking based protocol there are four simple lock protocol pre cream lock protocol two phase lock protocol and strict two phase lock protocol so let us see one by one first simplest locking what it will do it will give just lock okay see data while a simplest lock based protocol allows all transaction to get lock on the data before inserting deleting or updating before okay so it will lock, unlock the data items after completing once it is complete it will release before before starting it will lock after that it will release simple okay uh, next pre claim lock before you are performing something you are requesting that's called pre claim before okay so as the name suggests protocol check the transaction see what all locks it required to before it begin so before beginning it will checking okay and checking and it is asking for the locks before the transaction begin it please request to acquire the locks on the data before starting only it is uh, requesting if all locks are granted the transaction begins and release the locks once it is done see if all for example it has requested uh, four locks and four different uh, data for a, if it get all the logs then only it will be begin okay if any one it got uh, it didn't got it will wait okay so if all logs are not granted the transaction wait until the requested logs are granted okay until all the logs granted then it uh, till that time it will wait okay for example you can see here here we are acquiring log here we are releasing the log okay so from here to here right so that's a simple lock and pre claim lock now two phase locking uh, two phase one is locking second one is unlocking okay so we can also say locking as growing phase and unlocking is sinking phase uh, so what happens see in this in this phase locking are acquired on the data item but none of the acquired locks can be released in this phase see i will show you this is a, this is a, a locking phase this is a unlocking phase okay so this is growing phase this is a sinking phase see what happens for example i have requested uh, lock on a right lock yes i got uh, right lock read lock on a i got uh, read lock on a, b i got right lock on b okay i got now i have released the uh, what happened now i have released a once you start releasing one next you cannot again you cannot ask now you have to release all okay that's called sinking phase till now you are in the growing phase suppose you are going on requesting you can go once you once you have released any lock then you you have started the sinking phase now you cannot acquire any lock on other thing now onwards you have to release you cannot get a new lock now right so this phase is called as sinking phase so this is called two phase growing phase and sinking phase or locking or unlocking right okay strict what do you mean by strict strict two phase locking same only difference is here we don't have sinking loss but 
see it will not complete the transaction until it is committed okay so last time for example i have kept a uh, i have logged i have unlocked in let uh, street two facing power after unlocking the street two uh, two phase protocol what happens sometime we will abort again the transaction so it not it is not guaranteed that once you unlock it is completed it may be rolled back again it may be aborted so what happens again there will be a inconsistent data right but strict two phase locking protocol what it will do it will complete uh, it will commit until it commit it will not unlock so in previous two phase voting call what happens it is unlocking after that it may commit or it may abort but here after committing only it will release that's the difference between a two phase protocol uh, two phase locking protocol and strict two phase locking protocol see here we don't have syncing phase but once you committed we will release all the locks right see it doesn't release locks after performing an operation it release all the locks at same time once transaction committed successfully after complete committing only it will release see it is straight that means at a time it will release it doesn't have a syncing phase it will have a growing phase see one by one one by one it can lock but once committed it will release all the locks right next time stamp ah just like so suppose when you go for a sbi bank what happened they will give a token first you will get a one token second token third token as per the time okay so what do you mean by time stamp means you are giving just like a token system okay ordering protocol maintain order of transaction based on date time stamp means which one is a earlier one that one be given a uh, first token just like uh, same way which one is earlier they will give time stamp uh, this came this one now why they are giving uh, token in the uh, banks because the old uh, the earlier person who came the older person should get a uh, preference younger not not the younger one right so here same time stamp is unique identifier that is being created for, by the dbms when a transaction enter into the system time stamp can be based on clockwise either it will be on time or a logical count just like 10 15 20 okay okay so why why are we maintaining this time stamp means time stamp help identifying older transaction right so transaction are waiting in the line means fifo just like first one first come first you know, out right uh, and give higher priority uh, compared to new transaction because see older one if you go uh, don't give priority what happens the new one will come go on come the older older one has to wait for more time Suppose if you start for the from the older one preference from the older one, what happens? You will be balanced because newer one will come and they have to wait at least 10 minutes. The newer one come again, they will wait for 10 minutes. Suppose if you start from newer, what happens? Older one may, may wait for a one hour, maybe two hour, right? Uh, to balance this, we use time stamping. Okay. And time stamping, what it will do? It will give preference to the older one. Right. So how you give a time stamp means, for example, if I say TS, then it is time stamp. If I say RTS, that means read timestamp, WTS, write stamp, write timestamp. Okay, let us see uh, a small example. For example, first transaction came, I will give as 10. Okay, second one came, it is 20, that means younger. Okay, young transaction. Third one, more younger or you can say youngest. Okay, sorry, actually we should say as youngest. Okay, so young, old, young and youngest one. Youngest one will give given as 30 right okay let us see how this uh, uh, condition will be maintained okay so first to see i have t1 came i have given 10 token t2 came 20 token so t1 is a older one t2 is a younger one right so how it will perform for example read operation were performed by the second younger operation okay so how it will check for example right transaction right transaction is greater than read transaction right then operation should be rejected because for example i have read five uh five and uh, so two thousand okay after that it has performed uh, minus three thousand actually it should read as minus thousand now what it is reading it is reading as three thousand okay sorry for example uh, it has read as thousand and uh, it has uh withdrawn withdrawn 500 so actually it should read as 500 right so instead of that what happens here we are having a problem so we, the right transaction is first one but it's not completing before the read transaction so this uh, this uh, transaction should not be encouraged and it should be rolled back so this condition done next condition see right transaction should no should be less than suppose if it is less than 
read transaction then okay executed then no problem because it is reading after that writing okay for example next next see write transaction what it is if write transaction is write transaction is smaller than oh, sorry greater than read transaction okay so write transaction is sorry less than read transaction or read transaction is greater than write transaction again this should also be rejected because after completing write it is reading next writing writing also a problem so write transaction see write transaction is greater than uh, t t1 that is right see then also we should reject and we have to roll back this one okay so this is how we will check the timestamp right next valid base protocol it is also called as optimum optimized concurrency control technique so in this valid what we we'll do we have three phases read valid write so what read phase will do in this phase t will only read it will read temporarily all the values and what it will do it will write sorry t will read all the values and it will write temporarily see it is not updating to the database you will just write okay so what now next what it will do it will valid it will check temporary variables and it will check and it will validate ah now it's okay uh, it is performing serializable means after t1 complete t2 t2 complete t3 right okay so it will check the it when it felt it is uh, not violating any pro any uh, protocol then it what it will do it will see in right place what it will do if everything is fine then it will uh, write to the database otherwise it will roll back okay so this uh, in this again we have a time stamping like star ti valid ti right so we don't have a uh, write ti and uh, read ti but we have a star ti valid ti right so this is what valid protocol so once again um, concurrency means executing multiple transactions concurrency control means controlling the multiple transactions to maintain consistency uh, and uh, what are the concurrency control protocols means locking protocol in locking protocol and read write locks are there okay so and uh, in that again uh, what are there uh, basic basic or sorry simplest uh, locking protocol we have pre claim okay pre claim and uh, two uh, two phase locking protocol strict to two phase part next one is uh, time stamp in time stamp we have read time stamp and write stamp okay and next one is valid base protocol valid base protocol we have read phase valid phase and write phase okay so these are the protocols which will help us to maintain our data consistent right so i hope you have uh, liked this video and uh, i hope you have understood this video and if you understood the video please do like and support me thank you